Welcome back to the Anything Goes Project. Today, I think I'm going to do this episode completely outside because you know what? It's a beautiful day, the grass is green, and winter's finally over. So, let's jump right into this. We're going to be doing a review on the Ozark Trail Multiforce. I did a review on it uh, a couple weeks ago, basically just showed you the tool, what it is, and I don't really feel like that was a fair review until I had a chance to beat the shit out of it. Now, here we go. In a sea of the dying and shameless uh, A sea of the aimless I don't wanna be one of the nameless I'ma wake up with the mindset That one day I'm gonna make it And I don't think I'll be fine If I don't break my limitations Don't try to stop me I exist to write my own story I'll make a decision If I want some peace Or if I want the glory yeah. Don't want a life That is complacent Or possibly boring I just want a life That is worth every day exploring yeah. Well, welcome back to the Anything Goes Project. Today, we're going to be doing the follow-up review of this little dude. This is the Ozark Trail Multiforce. I carried it around for a couple of weeks and I beat the shit out of it. So, I want to actually talk to you about it and tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and some design flaws that I found. And... We're going to fix that, too, while we're on this video. So, with that, let's jump right into this. But first, I want to do a pocket dump and talk about a couple of our members of our Discord who also sent me images to use for the show today. So, first of all. Okay, first up, we got my pocket dump. Got my Victorinox Huntsman. Damn good little knife. Holds an edge. Great, like I said, edge retention. Great. Best little tool you could ever own. Uh, ladies, if you want to get your man a nice gift for Christmas or his birthday, get him another Victorinox. Doesn't matter if he has one or not. Just get him one. Okay, and then we got my little pry bar, which got the little pocket clip on it. So that one comes in handy. Set of Beg Larry beads. These are really fidgety and great little dudes to have. I'm going to be giving away a set of these pretty soon. So Zippo. And we all know that those are flicky. And my handkerchief. This is a stone wash, just typical stone wash handkerchief. I'm not one of these guys that has to has the bougie, the bougie handkerchiefs and shit that's got the microfiber in it. I just like a good handkerchief because you know, sometimes you need to blow your nose or wipe a screen or something. I don't do that with the same one. So yeah. Okay. So before we jump into this, I'm gonna pull up the Discord because we started a Discord. So many people kept telling me I needed to start one. So I did. We got it going, and several people have joined the Discord, and we've got a feature in there. It's uh, show me your pocket dump, and if you want it featured on the show, it has to go in this one particular channel. And several people have done that already. So for the first one we've got up today is Harley, and you'll see it up here, one of these corners. Uh, Harley, he brings us today his pocket dump, and we're going to talk a little bit about it. Starting at the top, well, actually, he didn't label everything, so we're just going to go through and talk about it. So first thing he's got labeled in his carry is his uh, handkerchief from Hanky Panky Microfiber Hank. Uh, it runs about 20 bucks, not a bad price. And then he's got his Drop Ferrum Forge Crux in blue. It's a $120 knife when it first dropped. Right now on Amazon, they're running about $170. Okay, and next we have his Raylite Pineapple in brass. Those are damn good flashlights. Love that brass. Patinas so well. And then we have the Teal Design Stainless Pry Bar. His quote pin gift set. The almost car everyday carry brass bead that is on his knife. And the Urban Carver's Mini Bead, which is on his pry bar. And then he's also using a Key Bar Junior Aluminum. So... Nice little setup, very budget friendly. Pretty much anybody could go and get this little setup. So let's move on to the next one. This next one comes from Solex, who's on the uh, Discord. And we got a lot in this one to talk about, so we're going to move through it quick so we can jump over to the Multiforce. First, we have his Leather Fossil Wallet, his uh, Rovivon Aurora A3 Keychain Flashlight, 
which runs about $29. And then, of course, is Nikkor MH2C Cree flashlight, which is done in LED. It's been discontinued since uh, 2016, so they don't use it anymore, but he uses the shit out of his still. Okay, he's got his Ride in Rain all-weather pocket organizer, which you'll see in here. And then uh, he carries in the pocket organizer a Fisher Space Pen, the 400B Space Bullet. And then he sometimes has a variety of pens and black Sharpies with it. Uh, he's got his Right in the Rain waterproof spiral notebook, which you will see off the side. I'm a big fan of those. And his Samsung Galaxy S10. His Sipgen uh, Neo Hybrid phone case. Uh, Jabra, uh, Jabra Elite uh, 75T earbuds. I've never used the Jabras. I've got uh, I've got Samsungs that I carry around with. And then we're following up with his Samsung Galaxy Watch. And of course, for his multi tool, he went completely budget on this one. This is a Winchester Winframe multi tool. You get it for about thirty six bucks. Usually Walmart carries them. Great little tools too. And then we've got his his Hoag. <laughs> this one, uh, Hoag or Hugh. Uh, EX A054 4 inch switchblade. That would be the knife that's up in the middle. That is a really nice looking blade. It's got that, uh, it's not necessarily a tanto, it's more of a sheep's foot, which is a really good uh, design for a blade because you got still got your good penetration point. Then he's got his Kozar 256 gig survivor, his Vandy Vape uh, Swell Vape Mod, which has been discontinued, and topping that is his UL Crown 5 tank. So, guys, thanks for the submissions, and uh, remember, we do have a Discord. You can find the link in the description, and come join us, have fun. We're over there just cracking up and having a good time. So, on to the multi. Okay, let's talk about this little dude. $37, Walmart. I was skeptical, especially being that it's an Ozark Trail. I've never really had any decent tools by Ozark Trail. Most tools that you get at Ozark Trail are, are, are really just your trash tools that you can use just to get you out of a bind. Uh, they, five, ten bucks or something like that. It just really just gets you, like I said, get you out of a bind. However, when they released this, it was a, uh, a lot of people were interested in it because of its design is very similar to the Leatherman Wave. There were some few changes that they made. However, like as far as the blade design itself, that's almost identical to Leatherman Wave's design. Now, as far as some of the few changes that they made, they reversed where the blade opens. Leatherman's opens from this end. Ozark Trails opens from this end. The steels are a little bit different too. Leatherman uses a little higher quality of steel. However, for edge retention, this one is held up. Before we open this up and dive into the pliers, I want to go ahead and talk about where we're at now. First of all, like I said, the blade, which can be opened single-handedly. Uh, I do like that about this. Edge retention, you saw me at the beginning of this video whittling away on a piece of red oak. Yeah. And still shaves. I've carried this, like I said, for two weeks. Uh, I sharpened it uh, the first day I started carrying it, and I sharpened it again, uh, when was it, uh, last night, because by that point it was starting to get dull. But I've already cut a bunch of stuff with a paracord, paper, and junk like that, still shaves. So edge retention, it holds up very well. Uh, I used it to shave some, uh, or cut some uh, insulation off of some 10 gauge and some 12 gauge wire didn't have any rollovers on the blade no glinting or anything so it did really well it performed very well you'll also see the saw the saw performs like a saw i mean you can see a little video it has no problems getting through the wood that was a piece of red oak that i'm cutting on and it it holds up very well and even still the blade itself, those are needle fine and sharp. I have no issues with the saw. The saw is wonderful. The serrated blade, I didn't use that a lot. I don't really like serrated blades. They're more of emergency use for like if you've got to cut through some thick ass rope or something like that. I didn't have to do that this week. Uh, I do carry some uh, 
huge uh, half inch diameter nylon rope, 500 feet of it in my Bronco for emergencies. I would probably use it for something like that. It is very sharp and would get the job done. But normally, if I don't need a serrated blade, I'm not gonna use it. Now, the file. I did use the file quite a bit to fix a few things. Uh, had a little, a couple like burrs on stuff. Uh, the bastard file on this side, which is one that's got the cross hatch, that's called a bastard file, works great. The face of this works as kind of like a sawtooth, but for metal. And then the diamond side. Now, I've seen mixed reviews on the diamond file. Some people saying they're using it and the diamonds, the, the, the fleck that's been embedded in here kind of rubs off. As you can see, mine is fine. I've got a little bit of glinting on the flex on like this edge here, but I haven't really lost any of the diamond embedded on the file itself. So this has been so far good. So now let's jump into the pliers. Okay, this, this is something I'm not a fan of right now. My Sogs, my Leathermans, you can flip those things open. This thing right here is a chore to open. It's super tight. I've even loosened up these uh, screws a little bit and it's just a really tight open to get it folded out in the pliers. Now the pliers themselves are really easy to actuate. They, they kind of stick at the end, most pliers do, but you can see the action is very nice. They work great. Now, I use these in an industrial setting. I work in the machining and engineering field, so I'm having to crank on a few bolts here and there, cranking on nuts and cutting some wiring here and there. And as you can see, if you look at my pliers, Got a little bit of rust in them from one of the nuts right there, but there's no rollovers or no shiny areas in the grips except for that little corner right there. Got a little nick in it from something I was doing, and there's a little shiny spot right there. The pliers held up. I mean, I was gripping some shit that was pretty tight and strip <laughs> rolling around the nuts, and it worked great. Now, let's talk about the wire cutters. I've used these wire cutters here at the house, at work, and they've so far performed very well. Small video, I'm cutting some galvanized steel electrical fence wire. You'll notice in that video, it snips right through and has no issues. Uh, there are several things that are going on with this uh, plier. They've got a curve section at the back. Let's flip back over. Okay, you'll see that little curve section back here at the back of the wire cutter. That's for getting those heavier gauge wires in. And it does a really good job at snipping them without crushing them. Now, like I said, I've used this on electrical fencing wire, 12 gauge and 10 gauge wire, and horse paneling wire that we use in like our chicken coops. And as you can see, let's look at it a little closer. They've held up. There's no rolling on the blades themselves. Unlike some of the carbide ones that you find in like the Leathermans and the, uh, the Gerbers and stuff, those carbide ones sometimes have a tendency of cracking and a lot of times we replace them with the high speed steel ones and they seem to work better. But this one is very reminiscent of the Super Tool 200 that did not have the carbide blades in it. And so far it works really good. You can kind of see a little bit of wear like in this corner here where the wires hit it and stuff like that but really nothing no damage or anything it cuts super smooth and the further back you got up in this channel the smoother it cut uh so i was very pleased with that and like i said a lot of people did reviews on the multi-force but they were just showing you oh it looks really cool looks like the leatherman wave blah 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 and stuff like that i wanted to actually give you an honest review of this I wanted to beat the shit out of it, so I did. And I got a train coming, so pause. Okay, so now we're back. Train's gone. So, I want to finish discussing about these pliers. Now, here's the part of the design I totally dislike. And I think in their engineering, this is what they missed. When you go to close this up, I know you saw my first video, the dogs again, whenever I tried to close it, it was a little tough, and I was like, man, that's, that's kind of tough. Well, I just did it again. Okay, watch. Close it, close it, and then you go to squeeze it. 
it stops right there. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? Because you squeeze it as hard as you want, it's not going to do it. But when you pull it a little bit like that, it'll finish closing up. Aha, design flaw. This is where engineering comes in. I'm going to show you once more. Okay, you see that? That's as far as you're getting it. Now, I don't know if you can see it right here, but on the inside, if you actually can see it, kind of like right up in there, that jaw is hitting on something. And it might surprise you. You open it up, and then it'll allow it to kind of close the rest of the way. So, what? is on this side that it's hitting. Ta-da, your driver. If you actually flip it up, you can see right here on this edge, that jaw is connecting, sliding right down that bit and connecting right there on that lip, which prevents it from shutting. So that was sort of a, a mistake in the engineering because that kind of makes it a pain in the ass to close. And uh, so today on the show, we're going to fix that. And you're going to see if it works because I've been thinking about it. And we're going to use a Leatherman to do it. <laughs> so, yes, Leatherman, this is a good plug for you guys. Let's see. I want my file. Now, all I plan to do is I'm going to shave just a little bit off this edge right here at an angle. Let's see if that helps. Do, 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 do. We don't want to take too much and cause a stress point. We just want to taper that edge a little bit. Okay. So you can kind of see what I did there. You can see it right there in the video. Just tapered that edge a little bit. Now let's drop our bit back in it. Close this up and let's see if that works. Because if it did, that's going to be freaking awesome. And they're going to owe me for that. So, opened, closed. Let's see if we got it. Ready? Ah, shit. It didn't work. Still hitting on it. Okay, so we're going to work on that a little bit and see if I can actually get it to the point where it will close. But that is a design flaw, guys. Do better, Multiforce. Okay, now we're going to jump back to the tools on the inside. The scissors. Small video. As you can see, I've got some paracord sitting there. I put some tension on it, cut it. I just hung the paracord out, cut it. These scissors have no issues. Uh, I've seen some people that were talking about they've got some issues with their scissors not cutting. Uh, I've cut paper, paracord, all kinds of crap with it. They work like scissors. So scissors are good. And uh, as far as the other tools in it, they work like they're supposed to. Uh, the flathead works. Can opener, I can't really say because I haven't opened a can in years with one of these can openers. I got a rotary one in the house. Why would I worry about it? But for camping, I'm pretty sure it'll work. It's got a good edge on it. So, flathead screwdriver I did use. Kind of as a pry bar too. I opened a can of paint. So, great little tools on this side. Let's go to this side over here. Obviously, the driver. Now, I didn't use their bit because what I was doing at work and stuff, I didn't need their bit. I needed some Torx bits. So I carry around a little bit locker from DeWalt. And those bits work perfectly for what I need to do during the day. As far as the bit driver itself that comes with this, I did use that. Works fine. This section works fine. I don't know about their bits yet. But as we all know, these bits are disposable half the time. You use them, they strip, you throw it away, you get a new one. Okay, so, but the driver, the driver works. So, have uh, had no issues with that. So, with that, guys, uh, everything about this seems to be pretty good, except for the, oh, shit, it worked that time. Maybe something happened. Or, uh, okay, I got an idea, I'll fix it later. But, as far as this tool goes, it's a great little tool. Pocket clip is nice. Uh, not a big fan of the, whatever the hell this is. That's a very flimsy plastic clip on the back for your belt, but I'm not a big, I'm not a big sheath fan uh, for belt sheaths for multi-tools. Uh, 
I tossed that in my little bag that goes in my backpack. I've got it with me. I like the pocket clip. Now, this pocket clip isn't nearly as hard as like the Sogs or the Leathermans, but it does its job, it holds it in your pocket, and it's sort of a deep pocket carry. Well, sort of. You, you got about half inch hanging out of your pocket, but it's very comfortable. Now, the tool itself is heavy. 9.9 .9 ounces. Uh, so, yeah, it's got some heft to it, but with the pocket clip and the way it sits in your pocket, you don't really notice it. So, is this worth 35 bucks? I would have to say, yes, this is definitely worth $35. If you're looking for a quality alternative to a Leatherman Wave Plus, because you know, some people don't have that in their budget. Here you go. This is going to get you out of a bind. This is going to do what you need it to do and do it very well, efficiently. And I like that about this tool. So this one is probably going to stay in my arsenal. What I'm going to do is get a organizer bag and I'll probably put it in the Bronco as an emergency tool with some flashlights, paracord, and stuff like that. So, yeah. So, this has been my official I Beat the Shit Out of This Tool for Two Weeks review. The Ozark Trail Multiforce. Is it a diamond in the rough? I'm going to answer my own question. Yeah, I think it is. I think we got some good contenders out there in the field of budget EDC tools. So, with that, guys... If you like what you got this all today and it was of value to you, please hit the subscribe button. Comment below, especially if you own this tool. Let me know what your experiences are with it because different people use it in different ways and I want to know how you've destroyed it. So like, subscribe, and comment below. And also, guys, we started a Discord. We got some really great people that are joining some of them are really funny and we're just having a good time over there. There's several channels where you can post your EDCs, your carries, your stuff that you made yourself, do it yourself. We can have conversations about what it is to everyday carry. We're having some vendors that are coming over to show you some of the stuff they have that are budget friendly. And so it's turning out to be a pretty good little endeavor over there on discord. Uh, had several people who were like, dude, you really need to get one started. So it did. And, uh, it cost me a little bit, but uh, I'll go into that later in the Discord. So come on over to the Discord, share us your EDCs, tell me if you want me to actually feature it on the show, I'll do it like I did today. So with that, guys, we are out of here. Subscribe. Okay, I think what I know what I'm going to have to do is this tip right here is hitting on that. Uh, I tried to file it. This this has been really good. <laughs> it's hardened really well. That little tip right there, though, I think I'm going to take that over to the belt sander and just put a little bit of a tape Okay, that was a pretty simple fix. Just kind of took a dremel and rounded that tip just a hair. Now watch. Pulls right up every time. This is like a drinking game we need to play every time a car goes by.